Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well, we're doing some summer maintenance on the uh, four-place enclosed snowmobile trailer and uh, got to look at underneath and realized we had some problems here. As you can see on these shackles, these are quite worn out and it's even worse on the top side than on that sever center pivot point on the equalizer. It's quite worn out as well. Um, so we went ahead and we bought this new kit. It's from Dexter Axle and it's a K71 dash 652 and it uses instead of this original equalizer in the center it uses this heavier duty equalizer with this rubber uh, bumper in here to help absorb some of the shock and then additionally it uses these much heavier duty shackles that are about twice as thick and everything is greasable so it'll last longer and then it also uses metal bushings instead of plastic bushings so we've already gone ahead and gotten all the bolts loose and or cut off as necessary there was a little too much swearing involved in that process so we're not going to include that in the video but we've got the trailer up on jack stands we've got everything ready to go and everything's loose so we're going to start with taking these two axles loose the rest of the way and replacing that center pivot so we'll go ahead and do that to do that we use this little bottle jack we'll put that under the axles to support it We'll put the bottle jack under one, we'll put a jack stand or something under the other, and we'll go ahead and take that equalizer out. So as you can see here, there's supposed to be some splines right there to hold everything. They're completely gone. You can see the new ones have the splines and are actually the same size all the way down. So this one's totally shot. I actually had to cut that off. Then you can see when it comes to the equalizer in the center, the bushing is half gone. The hole's all ovaled out. So that's gonna be garbage there. And then you can see here, bushings are all shot here. So definitely time to replace that business. So we'll go ahead and get all this new stuff ready and figure out how to put it in. So we've got these bushings here. We're gonna go ahead and put these in. They'll slide right in there. If you're careful and they're not too tight, you can use a hammer or you can use a driver like this. This is actually from uh, the Model T uh, front shackles. This is a driver for a Model T front shackle. Fits perfectly in there. And you can drive it right in. What you don't want to do is bend that all out and make it uh, all mushroomed on the end there. So you don't want to do that. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our grease gun and we're going to use our lock and lube adapter. You can pick one of these up in the link in the description and really a handy tool. As you can see, you stick that right on there, squeeze it, it'll lock in place and it won't blow off of the Zerk. We're just going to make sure the Zerk is working correctly and fill this with just a little bit of grease so we can stick it in there and have lubrication on it. We're just using regular red bearing grease it'll work just fine for this application and we'll go ahead and slide this in and then we're gonna have to fine-tune that to get it up in the hole all the way you can use a socket like this and a hammer to go over the zerk 
knock it in, it'll get up to that point and it's gonna hit those splines and not wanna go any further. So you're gonna have to use the nut to pull it in. But for now, we're just gonna hand tighten the nut on the backside just to hold it together so nothing falls apart while we're trying to do the rest of the assembly. So there's the back one. That'll make things a little more stable so it doesn't fall apart on us. Then we'll go ahead and work on this middle one. In the instructions, it says to put some anti-seize in this area, so we'll go ahead and do that. bolt that goes through, put a little more anti-seize on it, might make it easier to just get it through there. There we go. So you can see this already has its bushings in it. We'll go ahead and put it in. I think I'll try to hit these with the grease before we put it in just to make sure everything works. See the grease is coming out that side, looks good. Same here. There we go. Everything looks good there. So we'll go ahead and slide this up in there. Slide the bolt through. This one, since it doesn't have a zerk on it, we can tap it a little bit. Here's the nut for the back. Again, we'll just put that on hand tight for now. So then we're gonna go ahead and install the next bushing here in this front spring the same way using the driver. like that. Then we'll go up here on the front and do the same thing for the last one. Again, you can see the old bushing is just totally destroyed. Here's the next bolt. Again, we'll check it. It'll take grease like it's supposed to and fill it up. go on that one and we'll put the nut on the back just to hold its position while we get the rest of them on this side done okay so we got that front bolt all in place now we're gonna go ahead and put this middle piece in we've again greased it all up so it's ready to go using your jack you'll pick it up so it's in a position that the shackle will reach and then you've got to go ahead and hammer this back all the way in And 
you want to be careful that you don't hit that in such a way that you ruin the top of the zerk. Then you've got your back piece of the shackle that goes on. Might have to persuade that on just a little bit. Just like that. And then put your two nuts on. Again, we'll just put them on finger tight to hold everything in position while we're getting the rest of it on. Now this last one, same thing, we'll get it all ready. And then it's gonna present a little bit of a tougher situation putting it, in, it on since it's the final one. Now the trick here is you've got to loosen or you've got to raise or lower these jacks to get everything close enough. So in this case, if you pump this up like that, you'll see it moved it down closer. So you'll kind of just have to figure out what's going to work best for you. It still doesn't look like that's going to be close enough. So we're going to have to go here to the back, raise that one up a little bit, and then just keep moving things until we get it in position. So still not enough there. Oh, now we want a little too much. So there we go. There we go, then the back piece will go on the same way. And throw the back two bolts on so it doesn't fall apart while we're tightening. Using our second jack. We'll get this one up in the right orientation, like that. Then we'll loosen this one. Keep raising this one up super high, like that. And then tighten this one up. Tighten this one up and get it up into the right position, like that. So that's what they should look like, or similar. So with all these new parts, most likely they'll stay like that in that position um, while you're finishing tighten everything up. But if they do pop back down, then you'll have to go back and do that same process again. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna tighten all the nuts on the back with a wrench. And as you do tighten them, you'll see these front bolt heads will pull in and tighten up there. I think it said around 50 pounds or so in the instructions, but we'll tor torque those as it says. Then we'll go ahead and go do the other side the same way and put all the wheels and tires on. Um, so the benefit of these, as you can see here again, is this rubber. When the spring on the one side goes up or down, it will cushion that uh, impact there and make it a little bit smoother. Additionally, it's also greasable. So once we get this all finished up, we'll make sure we grease everything heavily so it's all ready to go. Get it all put back together and we'll be ready to go. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember you can't finish a project without getting started.